First, you need to confirm that the acid you have is HNO3. To do this, add small portion of it into a test tube or a boiling tube. Then add few copper tunings or copper wire into it. If the acid is HNO3, the solution will turn greenish. That is forming copper 2 trioxonitrate 5. Then if the acid is concentrated, there will be a release of reddish brown gas that is nitrogen 4 oxide as you can see. So this reddish brown gas confirms that the acid is HNO3. That's the only acid that will attack copper to release the reddish brown gas NO2. The greenish solution at the bottom is copper 2 trioxonitrate 5. So we have confirmed that what we have now is acid. Let's now check the density and the percentage of the acid. If it is up to 70 or 65 percent for HNO3, what you need to do first, you find the specific gravity or the, the density of the acid. To do this, you need to bring a, a measuring cylinder, as you can see, get the mass of the measuring cylinder. From what we have here, the mass of this measuring cylinder is up to 40 something gradually you have it now as 45 so the mass of the measuring cylinder empty measuring cylinder 10 mil measuring cylinder is 45 grams then next you fill the measuring cylinder with the hno3 up to 10 ml that's 10 cm cube of it then take it back to the weighing balance and know the mass this time around find out the mass of the measuring cylinder with 10 mil of the acid now as you can see remember the mass of the cylinder alone was 45 grams now we have taken 50 step by step so what we have now is 50 approximately 58.2 58.2 grams should be the mass of both the 10 mil HNO3 and the measuring cylinder. From the information and the data we got, you can see the steps involved in the calculation of the specific gravity or rather what we call the density or relative density. So this is very necessary to make sure that you know the values you are using. In case if there is a mistake on the label from the HNO3 you are using, you will be able to analyze and know that this is the correct percentage of this acid. Because most of most often you see people will just label any, anyhow. And when you are doing analysis, it will be giving you error. But since you have known this step, where you can determine the SG by yourself, that the specific gravity uh, from knowing the density of an acid, you can invariably know the concentration. So the steps are very clear and they are mathematically correct. Being able to assess the quality of your reagents and the materials you use makes you a good analyst. Don't just believe in what the labels say or what the marketers say, especially in countries where there is no strong regulations, because often there are, there are adulterations. So a good analyst should be able to determine the quality of the raw material he's using even in chemistry. So it's advised that if you're a chemistry teacher, you should know the quality of the acid and the base you use in titration just before starting. From our calculations, you see that 10.7 cm cube of 65% HNO3 is equivalent to 10.00 cm cube of 70% HNO3. So here I measured 2.7 and added it to 250 mil. I did this because the acid I'm having is not up to 70%. So if I have even measured 10 cm cube, it will still represent nearly the same thing. That's why they say about always because it's not a must. But this will ensure high accuracy for those that are involved in real analysis. Now, you need 4 grams of sodium dioxide dissolved in 1000 cm cube of water. Then here I measured 1 gram of the sodium dioxide and dissolved it in 250 ml of distilled water it is still a molar solution of sodium hydroxide remember 40 grams of sodium hydroxide represents one mole of sodium hydroxide as you can see using your weighing balance you be as fast as possible because sodium hydroxide is a deliquescent you measure it very very fast and now add it immediately though we are expected to use the hno3 to standardize 
the aqueous solution of sodium dioxide during the titration. Now let's do the titration. Remarkable colors during acid based titration using material range indicator. Often students add excess acid. In the center is the neutral color that is orange. Then there is little excess acid, it is a bit reddish. Then here is the color of the material in base, not neutralized completely. So you are expected to get orange at the end point or very pale pink.